rise as we join together in worship and praise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We follow the order of divine service setting four, and you can find it on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and you gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May be seated for the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. We pray together the colic for the day, found printed on the bottom of page two inside your worship bulletin. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the fourth Sunday in Lent comes from Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools, and I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? 
He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 5. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seen. The neighbors and those who had been seen him, who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he, he is like him. He kept saying, I am that man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes, so the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? 
And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. Why do you, why do not, sorry, you do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind... You would have no guilt, but now that you say, we see, your guilt remains. This is the gospel of our Lord. Having heard God's word, we join together with one heart and one voice, making bold confession of our faith in that triune God by speaking together the words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find those words printed for you on page 207. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for him 422. Jesus, God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours. From our Almighty God, our all loving God, our Heavenly Father, His one and only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May God grant us His Holy Spirit to create and keep that faith within us now and until life everlasting. Amen. The words of our text are printed for you as we take a look at how divine our Lord is. Certainly, by taking a look at the theme verse, you know. I am the vine, Jesus said, and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Here we got Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. 
And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And that is our text. So, being divine, we're going to continue our series here in the New Testament, taking a look at something that, I'll be honest with you, is not mentioned anywhere. I mean, to try to find anybody who's talked about this, or preached on this, or explained or tried to pull apart the essence of the original words, is practically nothing. All I've got is two Greek words. That's it. It's all that seems to exist. And commentators seem to gloss over this. So that was really good incentive for me to want to pick this part. There's so many things that are wood that I want to be able to bring into here. And this one's even questionable whether it's made of wood or not. The offering box. In fact... Choosing this picture, hopefully for you to focus on, and I know it's hard to focus this season on all these pictures and let them really imprint the image, so to speak, onto us this year because of the virus and everything going around, and that's all the talk. But I really hope and pray that these pictures really endow within you that image. And this one is picked because of that offering box, which is not made of wood because there is one Greek word that is used that says it's trumpet shaped and that's what I was going with it still doesn't say whether it's made of metal or made of wood but when we think of boxes and chests that hold money especially if it was like treasure chests we think of wood And really, I want to bring in the salvation part of all of this. And that is about the woman who brought it. You see, she's drawn to the box. That's what I maintain. She's drawn to the box because the location of this offering box is not in the outer court, not in the court of the Gentiles, but it's located in the woman's court. It's in the Jewish area of the tabernacle, of the temple, of the worship area. Still in the outer court, but only where Jews could go, not Gentiles. That's where this box is located. And she, being poor as she was, would walk through. Now, I want you to understand this is a big area. So keeping your distance from one another, piece of cake. No problem. Being able to come and be able to worship. So Jesus, keeping himself at a distance, was sitting and watching. And he was observing. And he's watching the offering box. That's what his eyes are focused on. For where your faith is, that's where everything else lies. That's where we tend to be drawn. We tend to offer to our God, whatever that may be. And Jesus notes that this widow, this woman, who is very poor, her heart was on God, trusting that he has blessed her and provided for her in all these things up to this point. Why would he stop now? And she gives all she has. What's really interesting here, and I did some checking before this section and afterwards, and then Luke's gospel does the same thing. He talks about this, and I checked before it and afterwards. What's really interesting is not beforehand, not during, and not afterwards. This is the one unique case 
And it's all around the offering box where Jesus never speaks one syllable of a word to this woman. Not one thing. He does not approach her, talk to her, say your faith has made you well. God will continue to bless you because you've been so kind and generous. He says not a single syllable of a word. And I found that very intriguing. This woman didn't do it with the noticing that Jesus is there. Hey, God, look at me. Do you see all that I'm giving? Listen to a cling within a metal box or listen to the thug as the coins drop. It's not the statement of John Tetzel during the time of the Reformation trying to gather all the coins in the box that could ring and how the souls from purgatory would spring, bringing, drawing attention. That's what everybody else would do. But this woman was offering of herself, her whole being. And not trying to draw the attention of Jesus to the disciples. Because once again, he is way off. He's just watching and observing. And he's teaching. The offering, the offering box, is a place to come together. To be able to leave your cares there and offer them to God. To take your sins and leave them there and offer them to God. To take all your worries and your fears, bring them there to the box, and let, give, offer them to God. You see, it's not about the money. It's about giving of herself, her total self, her complete self. What more could she want or need to receive? For she had it all, and she trusted with her all body, mind, spirit. The offering box, isn't it divine? It is the thing where Jesus, not talking to her, already knew how blessed she was. She already believed it. She was living it. It was for everybody else to see and notice. For Jesus needed to talk to his disciples and to all the others that could hear him speak, saying, notice this woman. Notice the faith of this poor widow. Truly, truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than anyone else. You see, it's not about the coins. It's about the offering of oneself. Leaving yourself in God's good and gracious hands, knowing that he is the giver of all good things, that he is the one who blesses. He is the one who provides. Whatever your fears, whatever your worries, whatever your cares or doubts are, we leave them in the offering box. We offer them to the Lord, and we know that he takes them. He takes them all the way to truly a big piece of wood, where salvation is found once again. For you see, he takes all your fears, all your doubts, all your worries, all your concerns, and nails them to that piece of wood we call a cross. Look at the picture of the widow dropping the coins in the offering box. And notice Jesus' instructions are for everybody else. How often don't we say things or do things that we think nobody even notices or sees? How often don't we go about our everyday life living that faith and we get discouraged because we think nobody's knowing what good does it do or what use or purpose does it serve? I have to confess to you, it is so easy to get down and depressed and discouraged. What good is all of this? Who could ever notice or care? It's easy to notice the shortcomings if I could only give more, if I could only do more, if I had it to do over again, I would be a better mother, wife, husband, father, son, daughter, brother, sister, friend. 
But we take a look at the offering box and see in it that our Lord offered us his life to take away our sins, our doubts, our fears, our worries. And the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all of that unrighteousness. You see, what we offer to him is just some little token. But when we give all that we have, we notice in the box this Lenten season that our Lord does see it and he receives it. And as we know, he opens up that tomb where death doesn't even stay permanent, but it's life. Maybe we are feared of, afraid of death. Maybe we do have fears that creep in and haunt us. But our faith is an almighty God. It's really good to be able to see the offering box, to be able to see that what we give is not our own. It is something that is all belongs to God. He has blessed us in so many ways, and he's not ever going to stop or give up. That's the promise and the assurance that we have. Who knows what the days will hold for us this Lenten season. But here's what I do know. We have a faithful God who notices us, who knows that faith where we need it to be strengthened, and he notices us of what we give to his glory and the furthering of his kingdom so that it can spread to the ends of the earth. He notices, for we are, he is the vine and we are those branches, and it is so divine. We are so intimately connected, and we praise God for that love that grace and that mercy. We give all that we have, all that we are, for it is his and his alone. Thanks be to God for that offering box that we can continuously give him that praise, glory, and honor as he has lovingly, generously, and graciously given to us and he will never stop to life everlasting. Amen. It is with thanksgiving in our hearts and total and complete trust in our almighty God that he is the giver of all good things that we gather together around the offering box, giving of ourselves as well as of our hands. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. O Almighty God, merciful Father, you are the vine and we are the branches. Through your Son Jesus, he's connected us to you closely, intimately, now and for all eternity. We thank and praise you for the faith you've created within each of us. And we humbly implore you, O Lord, that you strengthen us in that faith and life in you. Help us, O Lord, to know that you are with us always, that you will never leave us or forsake us. Help us, O Lord, to offer all that we are and have to you, knowing that you are the giver of all things. You bless and you provide. 
Help us, O Lord, to rejoice in the salvation you won for us through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, we pray on behalf of your church all over the world and all your people. Give to us good pastors and servants of your word who will preach the full counsel of your word and serve us with your sacraments. Raise up many more to serve as church workers and bless those who are now preparing for full-time church work. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, have mercy upon us. We humbly implore you, O Lord, to shower us with your love and grace. During the midst of fear and trials and tribulations, we turn to you, O Lord. We have to confess that we are not worthy of your love and forgiveness and grace. We deserve nothing but sickness and death. But we implore you that out of your mercy, you will bring the help and healing to us, to your people, to the world. Cause scientists and all who are involved to be able to find a cure for the disease of the coronavirus and for all sicknesses and disease that tend to plague our bodies. Almighty God, we humbly implore you to have mercy upon us. Help us at a time like this to turn toward you for that strength, that comfort, that help, that healing. Lord, in your mercy. Knowing your healing will and gifts, we come to you on behalf of those who are hurting in body, mind, or soul, requesting prayers on their behalf. Be with Shelley Tuttle, Rick Zimmerman, Lyle Todd, Kim Dong, Kim Fales, Joanne Walsh, and Justin Miller. Be with Phyllis Todd, Susan Utek, Sarah Hansen, Beth, Ken Todd, and Bob Dormeyer. Be with Kimberly Christensen, Don Millette, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Kathy Mast, and Howie Holenreed. Be with Mary Bowes, Joan Brun, Lauren Borchers, Diane Barge, and Roxanne Dahm. Be with Karen Neeson, Doug Millette, Penny Parker, Pastor Henry Witte, Diane Nelson, and Matt Legrand. Be with Josh Legrand, Bonnie Schneider, Brad Weston, Katrina Peabody, and Pastor Jerry Brun. Be with Arlene Schmidt. Steve Dolezal, Deanna Dolezal, Gary Bach, and Sandy Millette. Be with Ann Peterson, Lori Langdenberg, Bob Gruber, Will, Will Wittenborg, Carmen Ortega, and Mark Lover. Be with Steve Peterson, Jeannie Barnes, Randy Barnes. Be especially with Corby Barnes, who had surgery just a couple of days ago. Guide and bless his health and healing, that through this wounds, your healing power may enter in and your strength may come upon him. Be with Don Anderson and Butch Putzier. Keep them all in your care and grace, O oh Lord, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, defend your church here on earth, especially the pastors and the people who gather together at Trinity Lutheran Church in Martinsburg, Nebraska, at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bemidji, Minnesota, at St. Mark Lutheran Church in Benson, Minnesota, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Bertha, Minnesota, the entire Pacific Southwest District, as well as the faculty, the staff, and students at Concordia University in Chicago, Illinois. We humbly implore you to be with our brothers and sisters who gather together at the Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church in Sioux City, Iowa, and the Tri-State Christian Church here in South Sioux City. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, we humbly implore you to give your comfort to the family of Larry Nobby, whom you called away from this earth into, into heavenly joy. Lord, we humbly implore you that you give comfort to Colleen and the family. Help them to be drawn to you during this time, looking forward to the resurrection and the reunion of all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. We rise and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it 
it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. May be seated for him 423. we extend a very special welcome to you. It's wonderful having you worship with us this morning, and it is our prayer that this service has been helpful, beneficial to us all as we gather together as God's children to give him all the worship, the honor, and the praise. Please come back, worship with us again real soon. Um, just an update, um, the Hope Lutheran so far has decided to have services, to offer services, and it may change how all that's going to look because God only knows what's in the head. But as far as I know, we're going to still do the Sundays and the Wednesdays as the normal times. Um, but to help with numbers, if people are concerned about numbers, um, we've, we are recording it. I, as far as I know, it's still recording even now um, with these announcements. Maybe they stopped it. Um, I know that Bryce can do it remotely. So that's what I've understood. So we have those options of online, but also, you know, if you want to be here in the, in the sanctuary, that's understandable as well. And so during our regular worship times, certainly, and maybe we'll offer more worship times just to be able to help the numbers be smaller, if that's what you're comfortable with. But I'll be talking with elders and with the chairman, and please give your thoughts and input. But my only request is that we stay the doors open, that services will continue to happen. I will gladly visit anybody one-on-one -on -one as well to give word and sacrament that way. So whatever it takes to be able to give you the comfort that's found only in Jesus, especially in the midst 
of not just sickness, but the fear. The fear is the big thing. So just so you know that, we are having that and offering that. I think because there's two people where Bible class really does matter, and those two people aren't here, um, there's going to be no Bible class. Because starting to, they need this lesson today. So I, I'd rather wait for that. And so there won't be Bible class. I didn't ask anybody. I just made that decision. So hopefully that's all right. Um, what's that? Are we having Bible? That's a great question. You didn't even ask me if we're having services on Easter Sunday, so that was good. <laughs> I don't know what's happening Easter because it, a lot depends. We're going to have service or services. It just depends what the future is going to look like, and we're going to try to stay on top of all that. So for me to take a look to the 12th of April and say, yes, we're going to have Bible class, when maybe I'll just be offering a bunch of different worship services, it may be that, because I don't even know if the sunrise service is going to happen there, so maybe we'll have a sunrise service here. We're going to talk about all of it. I'll be talking with the elders, and we're going to try to get information out to everybody. Um, I mean, in one part of me, just says, let's just do this. But the other part is I'm very sensitive and aware of what people are going through, and I want to be available. So Bible class, I don't know. Worship, we're going to have worship. Well, that's a mistake. I, that's what I yeah. thought it was. I didn't look at that. Yeah, normally we don't have it. So, And I know that she gets mixed up, especially when we get into the holidays, the when, because I there's extra times and all of that. So. so, yeah, next Sunday there is no communion, just normally speaking we don't. But the Sunday after that, there is. Okay? Yes, Ed? Just want to remind you. Yes. And you're more than welcome. Take a look, get a card or on the bulletin. My cell phone is the best way to get a hold of me. Call, text, you can email, um, any of that. I'm, I'm attached to my cell phone. So it's all that information right on the front of our bulletin. It's all on the front of your bulletin every week. Look at that. What do you know? So you're welcome to call and ask any questions. I get a lot of texts and calls. Um, so, by all means. Any other announcements? I saw a hand over there. Yeah, Dar. Ah, yes. You're more than welcome to go. Sit, relax, enjoy the donuts, the coffee, um, the water. More than welcome to do that. And I, I'll be there. I mean, if you want to have a... If you got. Bible questions or something. I just don't want to do the topic of the sacraments when our confirmation oh, people aren't here. Just looking at questions. So, okay. Any other announcements? Have a nice day. In Jesus Christ, have a nice forever.